Hello, thank you for joining the webinar. Um, welcome to our uh, fourth flight on frequency series. Um, my name is Wolfgang Gerstreich. I'm a member of Four Flight's European Pilot Support Team. And if you are new with Four Flight or haven't used Four Flight in a while, today I will give you a guide uh, for, to getting started and how to use the app for your flight planning. Oops. <clears throat> I will start with a short overview over for flight and talk a little bit uh, about subscriptions and add-ons we provide. And then I show you how to utilize the web tools, followed by a section over the for flight mobile app. After the presentation, I ask you to answer a couple of questions before we start the Q&A part of the session. And before we begin, I want to cover a few housekeeping items. You can ask questions via the GoToWebinar message panel on the right. You can click the section which looks like a question mark to expand that section and you can ask your questions that way. We will respond as many of those questions as we can directly during the presentation and will also respond uh, to the questions in the Q&R portion. If your question isn't answered during this uh, session, please send an email to team at fourflight.com and uh, my colleagues uh, will be happy to answer your question. The session is recorded and will be provided um, via our website. Now let's get started. Who is Fourflight? Forflight was founded in 2007 and published the first aviation app in 2008. From our offices in Austin and Houston in Texas, Portland, Maine, and Onza in Denmark, besides the Forflight mobile app and the web planning tool, we provide the Forflight Sentry mobile ADSB receiver, which is now also available in Europe via various distributors, the Forflight military flight bag or business products like the Forflight dispatch or CTAPs for commercial operations of single engine turboprop aircraft in IMC and by night. Forflight provides Euro controlled valid route generation and flight plan filing for VFR and IFR flights via our Danish office. Have you known that more than half of our nearly 300 employees are pilots, flight instructors, or examiners by themselves and influence the in development of our products from their own experience? In case you have still open questions after the webinar, don't hesitate to visit our support center on our website or a search for training videos on our video library. Here will also the re recorded webinar be stored. The information I'm talking about can also be found in the pilot's guide in the documents tab of your ForeFlight mobile app or in, uh, on, on the support center on our website. If you have questions, contact our team via email on team at fourflat.com. Real pi people, real pilots, and we are happy to help. Fourflight provides several different subscription levels. When you check www.fourflight.com slash pricing, you can see a simple overview over all three individual subscription levels, Basic Plus, Pro Plus, and Performance Plus. The website provides a side-by-side -side comparison 
so that after that session, you can go to the website and compare what features are in which uh, subscription level and decide which way you want to go. After selecting your plan, you can select the regions you want to cover and add-ons, add-ons like the FLAM support license in case you use a Sky Echo 2 uh, ADSB and FLAM receiver for tra uh, showing traffic in the Full Flight mobile app. Or if you like to add optional JPEGs and IFR charts, optional VFR packages, or in case you're flying an, a, a citation jet, you can um, add uh, the jet runway analysis tool for several models. More details about the European coverage. And that's really complicated because um, the coverage isn't uh, the same between different countries. And uh, these uh, in details can be found on forflight.com slash Europe slash data. On the website, you can also sign in, <coughs> sorry, log in to the ForeFlight web app tools. On, after signing in, you can see a sidebar menu and um, point uh, on the upper, uh, on the lower side is accounts, where you can change your profile name, your email address, you can change the password for your account. You can review, renew, and upgrade or downgrade your subscription. Have you known that you can up or downgrade your four flat subscription every time the remaining value of your current subscription will be credited to your account? And all Subscriptions and add-ons have the same expiration date. Here you can also review and reload the receipts for your last purchases, and you can manage your devices. After setting up your account, the next step will be the aircraft setup. That can be done in the aircraft tab on the website or, of course, in the mobile app. We will never narrow the site menu to have more space for the information. Tap on new aircraft to create a new aircraft. There is no limitation for a number of aircrafts in your account. There are some required information you have to put in, for example, a tail number and the aircraft type. I call that aircraft demo one, and then we select the aircraft type. And here I select an uh, European model, uh, Tobago, Socata Tobago, TB10. Um, customers with a performance uh, plus plan have the option to select models with performance profiles based on the aircraft manufacturer manuals. And here in that case, also including takeoff and landing performance calculations. After selecting the model, you have the available performance profiles in, uh, on the page. And in case your aircraft does not exactly meet these performance profiles, you can select the profile and do model adjustments by performance uh, increasing or decreasing the, the speed or the fuel fuel for your specific aircraft. Always tap on the upper left to go back to the previous page. Customers with a Pro Plus or Basic Plus plan can add custom en route profiles. For these customers that will be a basic profile, 
where you can give a specific name, for example, 65% or default cruise or whatever, whatever. And the minimum numbers you have to put in is a cruise true airspeed and the cruise fuel flow. Climb and descent profiles are optional. Performance Plus customers have another option. They can create by altitude performance profiles. These by altitude performance profiles um, are using more detailed performance numbers to calculate the um, uh, performance of the aircraft uh, depending from the flight levels, from the fuel flow, from the uh, pressure, from the aircraft, uh, uh, and from the outside temperature. Next step will be the weights of the aircraft. Of course, you have adjust the basic empty weight uh, meeting your specific aircraft uh, waiting sheet, but you can also um, convert the weight units from pounds to kilograms. And ForFlight provides the app option to change the unit on convert the values in the single step. The same is valid for fuel. Simply changing from gallons per hour to liters per hour. And we have done it. If you intend to file flight plans, if it, it doesn't matter if it's a VFR or IFR flight plan, you have to be careful, fill out the filing section of the air, aircraft profile. It starts with the IKEA equipment. Depending from your uh, specific aircraft avionics, the setting has to be set. There are a number of sources available in the internet where you can check which are the correct settings for your specific aircraft avionics. Uh, IKEA surveillance is a transponder you're using. In most European countries, uh, the mode Sierra transponder is mandatory. So the S uh, for Sierra is a default. But if your aircraft has ADSB out or ADSB out and in, Please mark that section to make ADC aware of your option. That is also ADSB is also mandatory in some uh, smaller controlled areas uh, in Europe. Other filing option gives more um, options for customizing your IKEA filing uh, configuration. For example, if you are flying a November registered aircraft, sometimes ATC wants to know who is an um, operator of that aircraft. These numbers or this uh, information could be put into the OPR field of other filing information. Okay, that's for the setup. Now let's do the pre flight planning. So let's start with in flight with, with a flight weather. The weather imagery provides you for several regions in Europe and several pressure levels. The pre-flight weather information you can click on an icon here, for example, 54 hours from the last uh, update of the information to enlarge the picture. And here we see that is the information generated last of March and is valid for 4th of um, April, 6 o'clock UTC. And you can see the uh, on sea level, what is the uh, wind information, what is the temperature information, the cloud coverage and the precipitation. 
you can expect for that point of time. Using the previous and next button on the top right of the screen, you can scroll over the time and check how the uh, weather is changing over the time. The maps view provides additional weather information, usually for shorter time frames. You can reach the map screen after tapping on the map icon on the sidebar menu. Tapping on the stack icon opens the, the lector for charts. Default is an aeronautical map layer, but you can also uh, switch the street map, the area map, the Europe VFR map, or IFR low and high maps on. The right side provides additional information you can overlay over the uh, aeronautical charts. Here in that case, I have switched to the icing information layer. And the icing information layer, uh, the timestamp on the top left, shows that it was last time updated, the information was 600 Zulu. On the lower right side, you can select a specific altitude you want to check. And the time slider on the bottom of the screen allows you to score over the next 30 hours uh, to show uh, uh, how the icing in the, in the selected level is moving over the time. The same is valid for icing and now also for cloud information. You can check the cloud coverage in a specific altitude and check how it's moving over the next 24 hours. For VFR flying in Central Europe, the General Aviation Weather Forecast, GAFOR, is a yeah, well-known system. The GAFOR provides the weather information in the major part of the selected region in a specific time frame to get more, uh, so the, the picture shows the current situation, but you, when you tap on an area in Germany, which provides an area forecast, or in Austria, Switzerland, Croatia, and Slovenia on a VFR route, you can get a VFR route forecast for a specific time, and you can check how this forecast is moving over the next um, periods. The aeronautical map and the map overlays provides also additional information, for example, fuel prices for Afghas. Here in that example, you have Giebelstadt with 1 euro 99 and Unterschöpf with 2 euro uh, 5 cents per liter um, fuel. Afghas. On the map, you can tap on an airport to open the airport information pop up window. Here you can see the frequencies, the airport frequency, the next flight information service. If available, you can also see the radar services. Here you can select runway information, and you can access the procedures for that airport. Other tabs on the bottom of the pop-up screen of the pop-up window allow us to access the weather information and uh, more information about the operator of that airport. The the layer selector allows also uh, adjusting the map. You can change the map theme between light and dark, 
Or, for example, you can switch airways on or off, depending of, uh, on your specific needs. Finally, you have the Flights tab in the Web Tools. Flights tab, this form, is usually used for IFR flight plan filing. And it shows also an overview over all your planned flights in the past and in the uh, future. <clears throat> the flights in the flight tab, the logbook entries, and the track logs, as well as the aircraft information, are automatically synchronized between the web tools and your mobile devices, which could be three devices, two iPads, and one iPhone in case you have an individual for flight subscription. Let's switch over to the iPad. How is the iPad app organized? On the bottom of the screen, you have a number of tabs. Each tab contains a specific information like an airport directory, the map, your approach procedure plates, documents, weather images, your planned flights, a scratch pad for making notes, checklists, logbook, or more. On the top of the screen, you have the layer selector on the left, which has the same functionality as in the web tools. You can select maps and overlay information. You can open the flight plan window. You can adjust map settings by tapping the gear icon and more. The search line on the upper right of the screen allows you to search for airports, NAV aids, um, places for 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 settings in the the map settings for many things more. The crosshair icon on the upper right side centers the map on your per, uh, present uh, position. And finally, on the left side, you have uh, additional options to customize your map. The upper, the blue icons, show the selected um, map layers in case you have the aeronautical layer used. You can use the pen icon to make notes on the map. You can manually start and um, stop the flight recording by tapping, uh, tapping the record icon. And you can zoom in and out to your planned route using the three lower icons on the left side. The More menu or the More icon opens a sidebar menu with more information. Here you can access the tabs who are not uh, on the, um, in the fixed um, lower line. And you can manage your downloads. Currently, ForeFlight provides three regions, the United States, Canada, and Europe. And you have to sign up for at least for one region. One region is included in a subscription. Uh, the other regions are optional. So here, if you tap on Europe, you can, in the upper part, select which information you want to download, depending from the way you are flying. And in the lower part, you can pre-select countries for which you want to download the information. Um, it, it depends a little bit uh, where you are flying, if you so we want to select all countries or only specific countries. Um, so you can also manage the um, storage the ForeFlight mobile app is using on your device um, by selecting and deselecting countries and uh, 
data types. The, these settings are individual for each device, so you can have other information permanently downloaded on um, each of your devices. The More menu provides also the option to customize your app. By tapping the settings of, uh, an icon. Here you can set up your uh, app meeting your specific needs. And for finding a specific functionality pretty fast, you can use the filter line, put in the thing you want to change here, in that example, for uh, the units. And you can open the submenu. Uh, with units and, for example, change the time in Zulu times or it can change the speed um, uh, units, runway units, depending from uh, your, on your specific needs. Finally, on the lower right side, you have the timer built in to the ForeFlight mobile app. You can um, switch between count up and count down by tapping on the arrow and start the timer by tapping on the time. And of course, when tapping on the aircraft, you see our TB10, the aircraft we have generated in ForeFlight Web is already synchronized to your mobile device and you can start flight planning now. Let's go back to the map. As I said, you can select the map layers by tapping on the layer selector. And here, that is a basic, license, um, basic plus license. In that example, you have the aeronautical layer. You have the street map, the area map. Europe VFR, Europe IFR low, and Europe IFR high. These are the information uh, provided for free by European countries. In case you have signed up for a Jeppesen uh, Botlang uh, uh, license, for example, or you have linked your ForeFlight account to an existing Jeppesen account, you can also access Jeppesen IFR low and IFR high charts. The Europe VFR layer, I switch the aeronautical layer off. This uh, layer provides all um, VFR ICAO charts provided by European countries for free. As you can see, not all countries are doing that. The Europe VFR layer contains the ICAO VFR charts for Iceland, Faroe Islands, Denmark, the Netherlands, France, Italy, and pretty soon for Switzerland. In case you need other charts, you want to fly with additional uh, VFR charts, we have many options of, uh, from third party providers and you can buy them via the ForeFlight purchasing web page. And here in that example, I have switched on the DFS layer from the German um, um, air traffic control. These are all the uh, VFR or Visual 500 charts uh, available from the DFS. Another example, is Roger Stater or Ermel Young, which provides um, one to one million uh, scale VFR charts and also uh, weekend charts for the French airspace. Additional providers are Catabossi or Avio Portolano, uh, NETS for the UK, or uh, uh, um, providers for the Nordic countries, Finland, Norway, and Sweden. All the options are available on our web page. 
I personally uh, use aeronautical air when flying. With aeronautical air on, you get these quick filter icons, which, help, which helps you to switch on or off specific layers to customize the map on your specific needs. After zooming in, you can see the information. The aeronautical layer contains the IFR, the global IFR, and European VFR navigation data from Jeppesen, and also the terrain data from Jeppesen and obstacle data. You can see, for example, mountain passes with their name and altitude. You can see visual reporting points, visual um, routes for uh, departure and uh, arriving of airports. You can see, of course, air spaces with their boundaries, flight information, uh, service information, or, when tap, uh, or in, for airports, you can see the traffic circuit or um, other information. When tapping anywhere on the map, a sidebar menu opens, which provides you not only information over that point you have selected, you can also see the responsible areas of airspace and the controlling unit here, Geneva Tower, with the frequency 118.7 or the radar frequency, or the flight information service for that region. When you select an area, the boundaries of the area are marked in green in the maps view. When tapping an airport, you will get the information for that airport. Here, for example, Geneva, you get the information like uh, weather and advisory services, the clearance delivery, ground services. These numbers really depend are depending on the specific airport you have selected. The next step, provide the weather information, like the meter, TAF, or the daily weather information, which gives you an overview over the general weather over the next 10 days. When you select the day, a pop-up window appears, which gives you a daily weather forecast in the lower part with um, cloud coverage, temperature range, precipitation, and uh, in the colored band on the bottom of the screen, you can see the weather conditions based on a color code with green for VFR, blue for marginal VFR, red for IFR or magenta for low IFR conditions. The middle uh, section shows uh, the weather forecast on the hourly base. And the top of the screen shows the details um, for that selected hour. The next step is the runway information. And as you can see, uh, you, um, the runway um, information is um, shown with uh, wind information based on the current meter so that you can pre-select the right runway for your flight. The procedure tab provides all the information uh, here, all free available European Euro control um, information and sheets are stored and accessible. NOTAM finally provides all valid NOTAMs for that airport. The FPO button provides information about the operator of the airport, including fuel prices. 
By the way, here you can also report new prices to our team to um, yeah, adjust this, the information in the app. Tapping on the upper left goes back. For airports and mountain areas, we have also an uh, icon what gives you the information uh, over the surrounding terrain, like maximum terrain and minimum terrain in a 10 nautical mile radius and the airport elevation. With selecting add to route, that airport can be added as your departure airport. The map automatically centers on that air selected waypoint and airport. In that example, I want to select the next airport also at to route and automatically a magenta line is drawn between the departure and destination. You can tap and hold on the route line and draw it to a new position. After releasing the line, a pop-up window appears and you can now select the specific location where you have uh, raised the, 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 the button or you can select one of the um, waypoints, airports, or nav aids. All waypoints are the, uh, listed in an increasing distance from the position where you have um, yeah, the, uh, yeah, used the, the um, tab. I select that waypoint, and automatically the waypoint is inserted to the line. The FPL window shows not only your aircraft information and planned flight altitude, you can also see the departure, destination, and en route waypoints as bubbles. You can also select procedures for specific airports on the upper right side. You can generate IFR routes by tapping on the route button or set the estimated time of departure for a more uh, precise uh, performance calculation uh, by considering the wind to the specific uh, departure time. The only thing I wanted to show today is a real-time NAVLOG. By tapping on NAVLOG, you can see your planned um, route, the waypoint select, the uh, current leg is um, in magenta color. You can see on the green dots that on all waypoints you have a VFR weather conditions. You can see the totals and the per leg information. And when in flight, the uh, right columns are filled with your real numbers based on your uh, current ground speed. This um, real-time NAVLOG is very helpful when you're flying in air uh, space uh, in air spaces when uh, detailed uh, information about the next waypoints are requested by ATC. You can exactly tell which is the next waypoint and what is the estimated time of arrival at that waypoint. That could be um, VFR flying in Italy, for example, or when crossing the pond and having uh, to provide oceanic uh, report, position reports. The concept is the same for both. If you like your route and you fly it more often, you can tap on the star and store the planned route as a favorite route. You can use departure and destination as a name, or you can simply put in your own name for that route. Save that route, and the route is stored. You can recall stored route or the last 
plant roots by tapping on the uh, clock star icon on top of the screen. And you can get a list of the, your stored favorite routes or the recent plant, recently planned routes. Okay. The question is usually, how can I get my um, procedure place, plates organized for a flight? For this um, task, we have the charts tab. You can now create a flight binder by tapping and add flight binder, and you get two options. You can add a, a flight binder based on the flight you have planned in the maps view, or you can plan a, uh, or add a flight binder um, uh, based on the flight uh, you have planned uh, uh, as next in the flights tab. Here we want to use the flight we have planned in the map. And for flight automatically generates a binder with uh, the plates you have in, a, in the right um, number you, you want to use it. Here in that case, I have signed up for Jeppesen. So you can see Jeppesen airport charts. In case you have not signed up for Jeppesen, you can see here the Eurocontrol charts as airport charts. You can select the airport, but it's already pre-selected based on your flight planning. And here for approach, you can, for example, use Jeppesen charts. You can see the charts. And when tapping on the um, blue um, checkbox, you can pre-select the chart. Here the VFR area chart as a second. The um, approach icon shows now we are on the second chart of two in approaches. You can switch between the selected charts using the three finger gesture and wiping to the left and right to um, um, switch backward and forward between the pre-selected charts. The binder view can be closed by tapping on the close icon and then you have your pre-selected um, charts in a perfect view for your flight. The airport information can also be found in the airport directory. Also here you can use the search button Search for an airport, could be the name or the ICAO code, and then select the airport for more information. The tabs, the information are the same as we have shown, uh, as we have seen in the maps view. Also, airport can be stored as a favorite. Now let's shortly go to an IFR flight. IFR flights can be planned in the flight view. Tap on the plus to generate a new flight. And after selecting your departure or arrival time, you put in your departure airport, the destination airport, and after Tapping on alternate and pop up window appears, and ForeFlight automatically calculates an alternate valid for the departure time for your planned destination. Of course, you can put in manually an airport code as an alternate, but usually you can use the calculated alternates here in that case, Nice at the airport as an alternate and you're ready. 
As I said, as a performance plus customer, you can uh, do takeoff performance calculations. Here, already the meter information is taken in consideration for selecting the right runway for departure. The only thing you have to do is taking the flap settings for that aircraft model. And you can put in a safety uh, distance factor depending on your personal requirements or on air, uh, runway conditions to adjust the uh, calculation. And finally, the calculation lift off speed, ground roll, distance, climb speed, and climb rate is calculated for your departure. That can also be done for landing information for your destination and for the alternate. Going down, you can select routes for the route calculation. Four flat automatically calculates the right rule, also with the right uh, flight rule depending if the departure and destination airport are IFR or VFR only, we generate automatically IFR, Yankee or Zulu flights, but you can also adjust the flight constraints by yourself. If you have a Yankee or Zulu flight plan, you can also adjust the route generation by defining your own IFR pickup and IFR cancel waypoints. IFR pickup waypoints in case you are planning a Zulu flight plan. Four flights is generating a route. You can select the route. Route planning is ready. You can go down. or I'll go up, you can check the nav lock for the specific flight. You have the option to access your briefing for the flight. Here you can see the top of the briefing with the vertical cross-section chart showing turbulence, icing conditions, wind conditions, and temperature. Uh, other parts are showing the sigma charts, no terms, meter, tough information, everything you need for your flight briefing. Going back. Uh, further down, you can select the fuel policy. That option is only available for Performance Plus customers. Here you can define if you want to fly with minimum, maximum fuel, extra fuel, the specific landing fuel or manual fuel settings, yeah, depending on your needs. The weight check. And after that, you can proceed to file. Please make sure that you have put in your pilot information like name, email address, and phone number to get information in case of CTOT messages or flight messages. Tap on file, and you can file the flight plan. The proceed to file icon is changing, and you get a cancel and amend button in case you want to change the flight. You want to delay the flight, bring it forward, or change the number of persons on board, fuel, or anything else. What information does ForeFlight provide in flight? As I said, you have the um, um, crosshair um, button on the upper right to um, center the map on around your current position. And you can use the compass icon to switch between track up and north up. More information can be found with selecting the instrument line. The instrument line um, contains several individual configurable uh, fields, and you only have to tap on a field to change the field.
Another option for in-flight information is synthetic vision. Synthetic vision works as best if you have uh, the, um, connected an external HRS um, device that could be the four-flight sentry or could also be your built-in avionics. But it works also on legacy um, uh, iPhone and iPad devices. In that case, you have no attitude information as in that example. The green, yellow, and red colored terrain shows your vertical distance based um, on the settings you have uh, set for the uh, for hazards. And uh, so uh, the default and values are everything between well, lower than 100 feet of your current altitude is colored in red, between 100 and 1,000 feet below your altitude is colored in yellow, and everything more than 1,000 uh, feet below you is colored in green. That is also valid for obstacles. And of course, you can use synthetic vision and instrument line in parallel. Okay. The charts option offers another thing. You can simply send your chart to the map in case you have a Pro Plus subscription or higher. That is overlaying the approach or procedure plates over the maps view uh, for giving you more information in case you want to have that information uh, you need it. In flight traffic, we are working with several providers. So, for example, on the left, you have the uh, Air Avionics AT1 device. Um, what provides um, ADSB and FLAM traffic information. It's a built-in device. Uh, the Sky Echo on the right is also a um, mobile device but which provides uh, ADSB and FLAM traffic information but uh, requires a FLAM software license which you can uh, purchase with your forfeit li license um, for showing uh, FLAM traffic. And uh, newly also available in Europe is a four flight sentry, which provides ADSB traffic, carbon monoxide sensoring, and HRS for synthetic vision. You can see now traffic, ADSB traffic in your uh, four flight mobile app. When the uh, traffic comes close, it gives you a um, colored uh, annunciation and gives also optical and acoustical warnings if the uh, traffic comes close. That brings me to another point, alerts in ForeFlight. Uh, we have a number of uh, alerts here, for example, when approaching a runway, when you're entering a runway, that gives you uh, the runway information and the remaining distance. For takeoff, you get information about transition altitudes when approaching and controlled uh, aerodrome. You get also ATIS information, or when you are approaching the runway, you get three nautical mile final or 500 feet above ground line um, uh, warnings. Also, we provide uh, cabin altitude warnings if you are climbing too high. All the discussed things today can be found on our website. You can check forflight.com slash pricing to compare the different subscription levels to see which subscription level has what, uh, which feature and what do you really need for flying. The pilot's guide with all the information is also available in the ForeFlight mobile app. You can look for videos on our website or check on the latest information on blog.forflight.com. 
in case you want to contact personal uh, people, write an email to team at fourflight.com, real people, real pilots, and we are happy to help. Then you can start your free trial in case you have not yet planned uh, or not yet used for flight under fourflight.com slash 30 day Europe. If you have already used the trial, please drop an email to team at fourflight.com and we can re enable a new trial for you. Now let's use the, uh, we are over an hour, but uh, let's take a couple of minutes to answer some of the questions. Here, one question is, can we add the add-ons later? Yes. And though the, it, it works in that way, that you um, are purchasing a new uh, for flight subscription and the remaining uh, value of your current subscription is credited to your account. Let's um, take an example. You are buying a Basic Plus subscription, and after half a year, you're deciding to add um, an add on for 50 euros. So that means after half a year, you have uh, roughly 50 euros available from your Basic Plus subscription. You are buying a new year, a basic plus, plus an add-on. It's 150 euros, but you get 50 euros uh, credited from your existing subscription so that you are really paying for the additional year uh, 100 euros. Um, can you advise if uh, there is a Sentry distributor in the UK? Um, if not, from where can I uh, can the Sentry be purchased in Europe? So uh, in the moment we have uh, Skyfox in Germany and Kniebrett um, in Switzerland um, as distributed for Europe, and um, hopefully we will have uh, more coming soon. Is there a way to hide airspace as above? Yes, uh, there is a way. So today, um, as you can see, we are already over an hour. It was a short introduction. Here I want to um, yeah, point you to the coming webinars. In two weeks, we will have a um, four flight for VFR flying webinar. And in that webinar, I will show how we can hide airspaces, how we can uh, use uh, all the other available tools in the map uh, to customize uh, the, the information you can get uh, for VFR flying. Okay. the best oh <laughs> uh, what would be the best additional vfr package to add the to the basic subscription there seems to be multiple vfr packages that cover the same countries that is that is correct so um in the webinar i have shown the dfs uh, coverage uh, which is available for Europe, Rogers Data and Ermeljon. These are the three providers providing the, the largest coverage, but none of them is co covering all of Europe. So that's always a compromise and you have to uh, check in which region you are flying and what, which data, data are available. Here the information is on www.forflight.com slash Europe slash data. Please check out that web page to uh, find the specific, specific coverage for your country. Yeah, uh, the, the only in the map which is available for all Europe is the aeronautical layer. And recently, we have increased the number of labels in that aeronautical layer to uh, uh, 14 million, uh, 104 million. 
So um, yeah, now you now you have many many more spa uh, places and labels available in the aeronautical air. So last question uh, to keep it in time. Do, do you start have a future feature idea you can download an aircraft from the web database based on a registration? Um, that feature exists um, currently for November registered aircraft because only for November registered aircraft exists um, a public database. So that's a great idea. Um, the, the, the question is here how we can uh, get the information. In case I haven't uh, answered your question and my colleagues who are working in the uh, background and thanks to them um, they are answering all the questions um, please drop an email to team at forflight.com thank you for watching the webinar and hope to see you again in two weeks thank you and goodbye <laughs>